we have circuit breaker which helps us in switching the power supply in normal condition and as well as in the abnormal condition like fault. Plus we also have disconnectors which will help us have an isolating distance, visible isolating distance uh, when we are carrying out maintenance to ensure the safety. Then why do we need earthing switch? What is the purpose of earthing switch? We are going to identify that in this video so make sure you watch it till the end. Now earthing switches can also be used to save us from the fault situation. How is that? How that is done? I uh, will talk about that in the end of the video. But first let us start with why do we need earthing switches? So to understand that we have a very simple example here. You can see we have a water pump which is pumping the water and it is connected to a pipe which is delivering the water to the destination. Now when I turn on the pump, the water will start flowing through the pipe and it will go to its destination, which, which is the normal operation. Now when I switch off the pump, the water, it will stop pumping the water, right? And water will also stop flowing from the pipe. But certainly there will be some water that will remain in the pipe. The pipe will not become 100% empty. There still be some water remain in the pipe. Uh, you can see the illustration on the screen. Now, if I have to remove this uh, water from the pipe, what I have to do, maybe I'll just tilt the pipe a little bit to a certain angle and all the water will flow through the pipe and it will fail on the floor. So now I can say 100% uh, my pipe is empty. My pipe do not have any water inside it. But when you notice, even if we turned off the pump, the water was still in the pipe. That is the important thing that you need to remember. And the similar scenario happens with the electrical power. Imagine we have a transmission line which is carrying power to a very long distance and I turn off this transmission line, I disconnected the line from both the ends. Now power stopped flowing from it. But certainly there will be some charges, there will be some free electrons which are trapped between these section here. And there is no path for them to go for time being. And in this scenario, let's say if some operator goes to the line and touches that line accidentally or uh, during the maintenance, now this trap charge will find a path uh, to ground through the body of that operator. And as a result, all the trap charges will flow from his body and go to the ground. Now, this situation can be very dangerous because we don't know how much charges are there inside the line. And that could cause a severe damage to the operator. His life in is in the threat situation. So this working condition is not safe for sure. We need to have something which will help us in trapping or diverting those trap charges to the ground so that the operator can work on the different equipment that we have in the substation. Now, for sure, we cannot tilt the line like we tilted the pipe to remove the trap charges. Uh, we, we need something more sophisticated. And this is just the example of transmission line that I'm telling. Uh, this could happen very well in the substation. If we have a bus bar in the substation, this could happen in the sub, uh, bus bar of that uh, substation as well. The transmission line is just an example. So for sure, the current situation is not very good. So what we can do is uh, we can design a switch uh, and that switch we can connect directly to the earth or directly to the ground. Now when I disconnect the line from the supply from both the end, there are still trap charges here. But the difference is now what I will do once I open both the both the switches here, I will close this earth switch and what will happen is all the trap charges of the line will be diverted to the ground because that is the low resistance path that we are offering to the uh, trap charges and the everything the all the electrons uh, which were there initially will be diverted to the ground and now in this situation if the operator comes and touch the line nothing will happen because the line is now 100 percent safe all the trap charges we took care of it we diverted to the ground using this uh, the switch 
Now, since this switch is connected to the ground, it is called as or connected to the earth, it is called as earth switch or the grounding switch. Uh, both the terms can be used interchangeably. So certainly the earth switch is very critical component of uh, the switch gear. If you want to have a safe working environment, uh, then this earthing switches are super, super important. There are a few things that you need to know about earthing switch. Uh, now let's talk about that. So first thing is uh, earthing switches, we do not close it in the normal operating condition. So when the line is closed, we will not close that. So it do not have any continuous current carrying capacity. So if your system's current is 2000 ampere, uh, the earth switch will not help you in that because we won't be closing earthing switch uh, when the supply is on. Right. So they do not have any continuous current carrying capacity, normal current capacity. But certainly uh, we might face some situation uh, wherein the earth switch is closed and there is a fault in the system. So in that case, the earth switch should have the capability to carry uh, the short time withstand current for a specified time duration. Again, it's not continuous. It is for limited time only and which could be for one second or three seconds. The short time current, which is nothing but the fault current. Or there can be a situation where there is already a fault in the system. And in that case, you have to close the earth switch. So for that purpose, the earthing switch uh, should be having the making capacity as well. It's not mandatory. Uh, IEC standard has defined the different classification based on the making capacity, which we will talk about in a few minutes. So the earth switch should have the making capacity. Now, why this is required? So imagine uh, there is fault in the system. And in that situation, you might need to close the earthing switch so that that fault is diverted to the ground. So in that case, this making capacity is very, very important. And how you prove it? Of course, you have to conduct type testing on that. Now, what is type testing? I have already talked about that in one of the video. Uh, if you are interested in knowing more about that, I'll provide a link for it down in the description. You can go and check it out after this video. So these are the three important things that you must remember about earth switch. One, it do not have any continuous current carrying capacity. Two, it may have short time withstand uh, current capacity. And three, it may have making capacity as well. Now you will generally find two different types of uh, earthing switches. One is the independent one, which you can see on the left hand side of your screen. Uh, they are independent devices. So it will be connected inside a panel or there could be a dedicated earthing panel as well. And those are uh, like independent device. The second ones are the combined device. Now this means the earth switch will be combined with some another device. So on your screen, you can see uh, earthing switch, which is connected to the disconnector. It is combined with the disconnector. So you can see here uh, the bars with the yellow and black marking represents the earthing switch. So this is the device which is combined with the disconnectors. Now, there is also a device which we call as disconnecting circuit breaker that will that can also have earthing switch as an integral part of the device. Now, uh, if you're interested in knowing about what is disconnecting circuit breaker, I have a video on that. Again, I'll provide a link for that down in the description. You can go and check it out. So these are the two different variants that you will see mostly. One is the independent device and the second one is the combined device, combined earthing switches. Now, uh, let us look at the proper definition of earthing switch, uh, which is given by the IEC standard. The IEC that we are referring here is uh, 6271-102. Now, there are very, very misleading uh, definitions of earthing switch I've, I've seen on the internet. So to clarify all of these things, here is the definition given by the IEC standard. So the, the standard says earth switch is a mechanical switching device for earthing parts of circuit capable of withstanding for a specified time currents under abnormal conditions such as those of short circuit but not required to carry current under normal conditions of the circuit. So it's a very clearly stated definition. It is a mechanical switching device which is used for the earthing part of the circuit and it should be capable of or it may be capable of carrying the 
uh, fault current for a specified time again not for continuous period but specified time which could be one second or three seconds and uh, it it does not have to have a current carrying capacity a continuous current carrying capacity so the definition is clear on that and also as we have seen uh, it may also need to have the making capacity now based on the making capacity or the making current operations iec has classified the earthing switches into three different categories let us have a look on that now so the first category defined by the iec is the e0 capacity uh, sorry or e0 class which defines the earthing switch has no short circuit making capacities zero you cannot use it for uh, the making currents if you use it maybe there will be problems with the earthing switches uh, it will fail uh, and things could get worse so it is super important that you know what is the capacity of the earthing switch these parameters you will generally find mentioned on the nameplate if it is not there then make sure you you check the details for that so that is e0 capacity which has no uh, circuit making capacities then there is E1 class which defines the earthing switch can have two short circuit making operations without any problem. That is E1 class. And then lastly we have E2 class which specifies that the earth switch is having five short circuit making operations. Earth switch has capabilities for that. And how do you prove that? Of course uh, by conducting the testing. So it is very crucial that you know what type of earthing switch it is what is the classification of that if it is e0 class and you try to close the earthing switch in the existing fault then you are in trouble so very very important that you understand this classification now as i mentioned the earthing switch can also help us uh, protect our devices in case of a fault condition so how is that let us uh, know about that now this is uh, what we call as the high speed earthing switches now what happens is in case of the medium voltage panels or the gas insulated switch gear in the HV uh, switch gears, there is possibility that there could be an internal fault, internal arc. And that fault is very dangerous, a very, very critical situation can arrive because of that. And therefore we must sense that fault. And if we notice that there is a fault happening, then there should be an immediate provision which will help us divert that huge current and save the, our system and also the persons working in the vicinity of that switch gear. So there are earthing switches which are def, uh, designed to serve this particular purpose. So there will be sensors given for the earthing switches which will sense uh, the current, which will sense if there is a light uh, coming from the switch gear because internal arc there will be light coming so these sensors will sense the uh, parameter and give inputs to the earthing switches now since these are the fast earthing switches they will close very quickly and divert that fault current directly to the ground thereby protecting uh, the switch gear and also the persons working in the vicinity of that switch gear because if internal arc happens uh, situation could get really really worse so for that purpose we use high speed earth switches one example you can see so this is the earth switch which is placed inside a porcelain which is filled with vacuum and it will have the operating mechanism and all so whenever the sensor senses uh, abnormal condition it will give signal to that and the earth switch will close and it will create basically a short circuit and all the current will be diverted to the ground thereby protecting the system and the persons working in the vicinity of that now these are high speed earthing switches so in most of the cases they will work faster than a circuit breaker thereby protecting the system and that's why i said initially that earth switch can also help us in protecting the systems which is uh, very very important no doubt earth switch are one of the crucial component of the power system of the switch gear and it is important that you understand about that and i hope uh, this video has helped you in understanding the basics of earth switch and why do we need them if the video helped you then do let me know uh, about it by commenting helpful in the comment section below thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching Keep learning.